once you have identified your witnesses, you then want to determine the order of the interview. You always want to ask yourself the following questions. Is there any reason that you're not going to interview the complainant first? Should the alleged wrongdoer be interviewed second, last, or in some other order? Generally, you want to interview the witnesses named in the complaint before you um, interview the alleged wrongdoer. Now, next, you want to determine the format of the interviews. And this may, the format of the interview may vary based on the person you're going to interview, and you may not always follow the same format. This means recording the witness provided information and the options to consider are contemporaneous um, notes, dictated typewritten notes, or statements written out by the witness in their own word, in their own words, transcription by a court reporter, or tape recorded or videotaped um, interviews. Things to consider if you are going to record the interviews, you want to always check with counsel to review applicable restrictions on your ability to do the recording. If you are going to record, the recorder should be placed in plain view in front of the witness and their consent is obtained. As soon as possible, as the recorder is turned on, you want to state the date, time, place, and participants must be stated, and the witness should be should affirm on tape their knowledge and consent of the recording. You want to make sure that each interview that you do, it's starting on a new page. You always want to make sure that you identify the date, the people involved and present, time and place of the interview. You want to take very detailed notes, almost as verbatim as possible. At the end, you review the notes with the interviewee to confirm the accuracy. You want to ask and determine if the interviewee has anything else to add. You want to review your notes and finalize them immediately. Notes should be free of grammar and spelling errors because those can potentially be used to discredit the interviewer's um, credibility or discredit them in the course of litigation if that ensues uh, later on. When taking notes, do not include your own interpretations, beliefs, assumptions, or conclusions. If you note information during the interview that impacts the credibility, you should note it separately on a different document. You don't want that to be in your actual interview notes. Um, some things to consider uh, as far as determining the credibility of the witness is contradictory statements, of course, facial expressions, defensiveness, or any other expressions of demeanor that you may observe. Now, prepare an outline of questions you're going to ask. You always want to know, have a roadmap with every individual you're going to interview. You want to maintain a professional demeanor, determine the extent of personal as opposed to hearsay knowledge that the witness is providing you. Ask open-ended questions rather than leading questions. For example, an open-ended question would be, how did you respond to, um, I mean, a leading question would be, how did you, I mean, an open-ended question would be, how did you respond to the statement and not, did you tell him his statement made you uncomfortable? That's a leading question. And the reason you don't want to ask leading question is that those questions limit the ability of the witness to provide all of the information they may have. Um, you want to always ask follow-up questions to make sure that you've received and obtained sufficient detail from the interview. Ask for any supporting documents they may have. And note whether the witness refuses to review or sign a written statement and um, any reason they give for their refusal to do so. Things not to do during the interview. Uh, do not intimidate the witnesses. Don't promise absolute confidentiality. Um, don't tell the witnesses that their statements will be kept off the record because complete confidentiality can never be assured. Um, again, ask leading questions because that allows the witness to provide their own facts. Now, when interviewing the accuser, the person that made the complaint, at the beginning, the individual should be told that the company takes the report seriously and will investigate thoroughly, that the investigation will be confidential to the extent possible. Company does not tolerate any type of retaliation for making a report of misconduct or harassment, and that they must immediately inform either the investigator or human resources or some other individual that they must report to of any perceived retaliation or a further instance of misconduct or if it's harassment. 
um, that they must report it. During the interview, you should be, the interviewer should be sensitive to the issues being raised, get a description of each incident, including details such as date, time, date, place, nature of con conduct, and identity of witnesses, and including any other persons that they may have, any other persons that may have been harassed. <clears throat> For each incident, you wanna ask whether there is documentation that constitutes a record of the harassment. So as you are conducting the interviews, there may be more than one incident. So you wanna follow through and ask detailed questions about every single incident. And you wanna follow the same line of questions you wanna ask, but with each separate incident as you are covering it. You wanna, you know, I'm gonna go with the interest in time. And I know we don't have that much time and I have a lot to cover. So I'm just going to sort of just uh, um, go through this quickly. You wanna determine and record limits of any of the complainant's corporateness. Determine the complainant's reason for delay if there is any. Consider asking what the complainant would like to see done to ensure the problem does not reoccur. <clears throat> determine if the conduct has any effect on the complainant, but do not suggest any effects such as emotional damage, trouble sleeping, or any other effect. This is actually key. Um, it's hard to, and the complainant may not have any, so just be be very mindful of not suggesting any, any um, effects. Explore the need for any interim action while the investigation is pending, and consider whether to prepare and ask, but don't, do not demand the complainant to review, correct, and sign a written account of the allegations after the interview. And if the complainant refuses to sign a written statement, you want to make a note of why uh, they refuse to do so. When um, interviewing the alleged wrongdoer, you want to um, inform them of the following at the very beginning of the interview. The purpose of the meeting is to ask about allegations of workplace conduct. Prior to the meeting, no conclusions have been reached. The interview is his or her opportunity to provide their version of the facts at issue and full truthful cooperation is expected of everyone involved in the investigation. And you wanna make sure that you let them also know that the individual is prohibited from interfering with the investigation, for example, by talking with other employees about the allegations or the subject matter of the complaint, any retaliation is forbidden, even if the allegations under investigation are proven false. They should be informed that all types of retaliation are forbidden, such as if, if the person is in a supervisory position, they should be cognizant of demoting, transferring, or dismissing the complainant, any employee involved in the investigation. So it's not just retaliation against the complainant themselves, but also other individuals, other employees who are part of the investigation process. You want to examples of retaliation that you want to tell them to be cognizant of is other verbal misconduct, denial of overtime, or any other job benefit to the complainant, any employee involved in the investigation, or rebuking or rebuffing the complainant or any employee involved in the investigation. Uh, begin with general description of the allegation, again, asking open ended questions and obtain narrative responses. Identify each alleged improper statement or action in detail and allow the wrongdoer the opportunity to respond to each incident. Explore any working or personal relationship between the complainant and alleged harasser. Ascertain the relationship if the alleged, of the alleged wrongdoer to the complainant, for example, whether the wrongdoer is an agent of the company, a supervisory employee or a coworker or a non-employee. Learn the extent and nature of the interactions they had with the alleged victim. For example, determine whether there were any gifts exchanged, cards or notes that have been exchanged. There has been a dating, sexual, social or working relationship. If the complainant initiated or participated in any sexual discussions, jokes or gestures, um, and whether the complainant ever indicated any displeasure with anything that the alleged wrongdoer said or did, or whether the complainant asked a alleged wrongdoer to end such behavior. <clears throat> 
And then you want to inquire about the behavior of the complainant and the alleged wrongdoer during the time surrounding the allegations. Uh, about you want to ask about other potential witnesses, explore any reasons the complainant may have to be untruthful, for example, a soured romance, work disappointments, job performance, personal problems outside of work. Provide the wrongdoer with an opportunity to provide alibis or mitigating circumstances. Consider whether to ask written responses to the allegations. Note if the wrongdoer refuses to provide a signed written statement and the reasons given for refusing to do so. When interviewing other witnesses, out, at the outset, you want to let the witnesses know the purpose of the interview is to investigate a complaint of misconduct, that they should be, you know, truthful and cooperate fully. And there is no retaliation for cooperating in the investigation. And the witness has the right and duty to report any perceived retaliation. In after that, obviously, you want to do follow-up interviews. You want to obtain responses by complainant, alleged wrongdoer, or witnesses of any significant observations. Decide whether to conduct an interview process, including former employees who likely may have more information. For example, they worked in the relevant vicinity during the relevant period to the alleged harassment, even if they were not identified by others. When investigating a verbal harassment incident determine the nature, frequency, context, and the intended target of the alleged remarks. Was the complainant singled out? Did they participate in the banter? Was What was the relationship of the individuals involved? Were the remarks hostile or derogatory? And for example, in a quid pro quo uh, type of harassment complaint, the investigator must determine the validity of the supervisor's stated reason for the adverse employment action. And finally, um, here are some mistakes to avoid as you're conducting the investigation. You obviously do not want to secretly record any interviews, telephone calls or intercept any emails, et cetera. Should not use polygraph testing. Do not attempt to keep interviewees at an interview site against their will. Do not reach any conclusions before the investigation is over. Conclude the investigation and prepare a report. Mm -hmm.